from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-DOG. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And, um, you know me, I've lived alone for a couple of years and I love it. Love it. There's nothing like it. Everything I do is great. Every idea I have is not criticized. Anytime I want to come home, fine. Anytime I want to leave during the day, fine. Gives me goosebumps. I go to my weekend house up north. It's quiet. I jump in the pool. I ruminate. I can play loud music. I can watch sports at top volume. My place is neat and organized. There are no knitting needles or balls of yarn. Uh, there are no uh, animals mucking up the place. My place, my way. God, I love it. Many of you out there um, are too insecure, too immature. By the way, in my life, I've been both. That's how I know what you are. Many of you are too insecure or immature to live on your own, and you have decided to move in with someone else. I've given you all a hard time about this for some time now. One of the things that you don't have to deal with when you live alone, that I know those of you who are living together have to deal with, is you move in with somebody, but in reality, many times you move in with somebody you hardly know. I mean, honestly, I think back on people I moved in with, and what did I know about them? How they like to have sex, how many times a day they like to have sex, Maybe I knew what kind of movies they liked or what kind of music they listened to because we might have gone to a movie or a concert. But did I really know the deep, dark, dirty side of them? Did I really know what they're like when I'm not around? One of the things I've warned you all about is that Dating someone and living with someone are two different worlds. Once you move into their place, or they stampede their way into yours, you start to see all the things about them that you never knew before. You know why? Because before you were only seeing them on nights when both of you wanted to get laid. And then when you wanted to get laid, the two of you put your best feet forward. You put your best feet forward. Yes, you did. So the result of it was that you would um, only go out on nights when you felt good, looked good, sounded good. On the nights when you really wanted to get laid, and more importantly, on the nights that she really wanted to get laid. The other nights, you weren't together. You weren't there when she had the pounding headache, or the PMS symptoms, 
or the period that never ends. You weren't there, uh, ladies. You were not there when you you didn't realize the guy had a German mother and father and that he liked to make sauerkraut at home and this place smelled wretched from the smell of sauerkraut or other forms of cabbage. Or maybe that he just tossed all his underwear off and left it on the floor. You thought that was just when you were having sex. No, he does it all the time. Once you move in with somebody, you find all the things they've been hiding. Guys, you had no idea how much makeup she wears. <laughs> Ladies, you'd had no idea that skid marks were not just for NASCAR anymore. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when you move in, you find out all that stuff you haven't known. And many times, it really puts a damper on the whole experience of, of being in a relationship. Many of these little things can drive one crazy. I can go over a brief list of things that women did in my home that just drove me nuts. Uh, one had a cat who uh, like to uh, jump on curtains and hold on for dear life. And I had floor-to-ceiling curtains in my living room. And there was the cat shredding my curtains. And then when I would uh, ask my girlfriend to take a look and see what was happening, she'd say, isn't that cute? Look at that! She's right at home! Yeah. Claw marks on my furniture, turning my big stereo speakers back when I had big stereo speakers into a, a scratching post. Pantyhose in the shower, using my razor. Women whose uh, hygiene didn't pass the sniff test, if you know what I mean. Women who like talking on the phone when they're in bed at midnight, one in the morning. And the worst ones of all, of course, are the fact that uh, you start to find out and you get that sinking feeling that the woman you thought was this big, hot as a pistol sex machine was only seeing you on nights when she felt like a hot as a pistol sex machine. And the other nights when she was a, uh, she was PMSing, post MSing, or whatever she was doing. When she had headaches, when she walked around like a slob, when she sat in bed with a hot water uh, bottle on her stomach and, and ate pints of haagen to get over her depression or her period. Or how about this? You move in with somebody and they have bouts of depression. Or you find out that they're on some kind of anti-depression medication. You never knew that until they started sharing a medicine cabinet with you. So I want to talk to those of you who have recently, not 10 years ago, but recently moved in with someone and you have discovered the truth about them. The god-awful, disgusting, dirty, seamy, underbelly truth of them. There's all kinds of things you never knew until they came to live with you or until you went to live with them. Tell me all the dirty details. Damn. Like is 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-866 I was with this girl for like a year and a half And that was just a mess You know, I broke up for like four months ago And we're talking two to three girls every week since then I love that It's just because I'm listening to you, man The Tom Likey Show The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right. You have moved in with somebody, and now you're finding out all the stuff you never knew about. What? Jake on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Good. Glad to hear. Listen, I got a situation. Okay. Um, I moved in with my girl probably a month ago, okay? And, you know, I've been to her parents' house. You know, her it's spotless. You know, you'd think she's, like, super clean, things like that. Well, I go to move in, 
and I find out she's a slob. She's worse than a guy. She eats like a pig. She's the hottest thing, you know, and, the, and you know, the bedtime stuff, it's great, you know. But the only thing that's stopping me is that she's paying half the rent. Now, I don't know what to do. If I should leave, because I just got a new job and something, and I got you know, so. Why didn't you just get a roommate? Well, I mean, well, nobody, I'm only 20, and nobody else really wants to move forward. They're still in with their mom, you know what I mean? So, I don't really have anyone that would, you know, move in with me. Come on, do you, you know that in L.A., uh, and I don't know about uh, where you live in the Inland Empire, but there are uh, agencies. Just do a little googling. There are agencies that will help you find a roommate. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if I want some strange, you know, strange person to live with. I, hey, how's it going? Oh, hi. well, hey, some of these. Fun. By the way, some of the. But how how well do you know your girlfriend? Uh, about a year. Well, <laughs> that's not much better than you're going to know the average person who's going to be your roommate. <laughs> Yeah, but um, right. well, the thing is, is um, she pays the rent, but I just don't like her sleeping habits. You know, she wakes me up in the night like, to talk to me. It's like I have to get up at four to go to work every day. You know, even right now I'm sitting on the ninety one in traffic and waiting. You know, I got to go home to this sloppy house. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> so you see, it's distracting you from what you're trying to do. Right, and I just don't know how to get out of it. That's my thing. But what do you mean you don't know how to get out of it? I don't I don't understand what you said. You don't know how to get out of it? I mean, well, uh, do I just kick her out and then get a roommate? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And you Google them on the Internet? Yes. Yeah. There's one in L.A. called Roommate Finders, I believe it's called. Okay. Yes. Do a little research here. Okay. Do you get to know them first? Because I don't know. Especially in L.A., I don't want to go over there, you know. Uh, some of these places actually do credit screening on the people. Uh, I imagine you can meet them first. Okay. To be a girl? I mean, I haven't had a roommate. You don't want a girl. To live with you, right? You don't want a girl living with you. Okay. Girls are something you go have sex with. <laughs> okay. Stop with this idea that a girl has to live in your house. Okay. Do you want to share everything with a girl? Have her decide what's going to be on TV half the time or more? Want no. girls to come in with their animals and their okay, shower and that's habits? Another thing. That's another thing. I told her no dogs. And what does she come come home with? Two miniature uh, pincher puppies. They're like three weeks old, and so I gave them to PetSmart. And then she comes home with this other mutt that's probably like six weeks old. And I'm saying, hey, what are you doing? Come on, get rid of it. And so I got rid of it, gave it to PetSmart. Now she has a teacup that her mom bought her, and I yelled at her mom and said, you know, I, my carpet is nasty in here. It comes out of my deposit, you know what I mean? So, you know what, you're right. It's not a good idea. So you need to uh, take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All right, and stop with the living with women. Why do you have to live with a girl? Well, I was raised with sisters all my life, so I'm used to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, it turns you into a pussy. <laughs> Maybe. You need to live. You need to live with guys. Okay. Watch the game. Have beer in the fridge. Girls are over there to be used, abused, and then tossed. Okay. Start being like a guy. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, can you um, take me out? Uh, with an orgasm and then blow me up? I can. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. one 800 tom that's our telephone number. All right, you just moved in with somebody, and now you're finding out all the stuff you never knew about them when you dated them. Scott on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Father, how are you? I'm okay, son. Good, yeah, I just moved in uh, with my girlfriend last weekend um, of a year, and um, I mean, a month, right when I put in my 30-day notice of when I moved out of the other place is when she started kind of changing and uh, turning kind of different, and just got really uh, kind of, um, you know, bitchy, I guess. And uh, uh, Tell us, tell us like, some uh, of the ways, yes. Yeah, so little things like, uh, 
you know, like I open a beer in the frick in the kitchen and leave the bottle cap on the counter because I'll get it later. She flips out about it, like absolutely freaks out. And I'm like, look, you know, I'm going to have a lot of proverbial bottle caps that I'm going to be throwing out here. So I hope you kind of get used to the way I am. I thought I knew you here. And uh, I mean, I'm trying to go over that with her. But you're trying to go over it. You're trying to go over it with her. Yeah, trying to let it get her used to you know, how it is to live with the guy, you know, because she never really has. So. You understand just the language you're using indicates that she has completely bullied you. Yeah, I guess it's a compromised situation. What have I said about compromise of this program? Um, that it's not good. Yeah, is it good? Yeah, it's, um, it's not good. I, I just got out of a situation where I was uh, living with uh, two other roommates, and it was really good. And you know, it's all about the sports center and uh, pizza and doing what you want to do all the time. And now uh, I got to eat at a certain time each night, and uh, you know, can't go out unexpectedly. And you know, I got to report. So uh, just to all the guys out there that are thinking about doing it, uh, you know, think about it twice. Well, you know you could undo it. Yeah, the thing is, is that, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're set to get married here pretty soon. What? I know, Father, but, I But you're, you. miser you're miserable now. <laughs> I know, it's... Uh, if you're miserable now, why are you getting married? Yeah, you're right. Um, I guess it's my call. Well, I, but, I know uh, I'm right, but I'm asking you to tell me from your perspective why you would do it if you're miserable. Well, the thing is, is that I want to try it out. I, I had to try it out, you know. No, 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 no. That's like trying out having a baby. Yeah. I guess you can't right. try that out. Once you have a baby, there it is. Right. Um, you tried well, out living with her, and it doesn't work. Well, that's, that's where the trying out, out comes I mean, on. You're already there. Yeah, pretty much. What have you found out so far? Well, it's just a lot different, and uh, it's, and uh, you're it's miserable. not my way anymore. <laughs> you are, and you're miserable, right? Well, it's not like uh, it's not like it used to be. You were happier living with roommates, right? I, doesn't that tell you you should not proceed with this plan? Yeah, I, I kind of already committed to it that time. That doesn't matter. You committed to it based on what you knew at the time. You yeah. have now done more research, and you have found out more about the person you made this agreement with. Yeah, but um, but basically, she did definitely uh, change uh, once once I moved in. There, that's why this is. That's why we used to call living together trial marriage. Yeah, didn't you? Well, yes, and that's how you should use living together. You have now had the opportunity of a lifetime. You've gotten to find out what living with her 24-7 would be like, and it stinks. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you've been there, so, I mean, you can... I have been there and back. Right. So why in the world would you then press it? When is this wedding supposed to take place? Um, in a month. A month? <laughs> yeah. When did you move in? Um, last weekend. Are you kidding me? Yeah, things are happening kind of quick. Why did you let that happen? Well, I just kind of I delayed the moving in thing for so long. and um, How long were you dating her again? Uh, since uh, at least a year now. No, no, no. Uh, what do you mean? You don't even know? Well, it's been a year. I mean, we feel like we kind of... You know, we were really what, cool. What with is this? We we don't change. know how we feel. You know what? We don't feel anything. We don't know how we feel. You only know how you feel. You're talking like a pussy whipped husband. Well, we felt when we get pregnant, when we have a baby, and we stop it. You're right. You're right. And by the way, let me let me guess the next uh, scenario here. How many pages is your prenup? 
Um, I don't have one because I don't really have there any assets. There we anything. go. And you don't really have any assets. But what you've just told the world, Scott, is you not only don't have any assets, but you're planning on being a loser the rest of your life. Why? Because I'm getting married? No. Oh, because, because, you you, because you won't have any assets for the rest of your life, right, Scott? Oh, uh, I see what you mean. No, I guess you're right, but then in order to do that, you gotta get a lawyer, and then that costs money, and... Well, maybe you shouldn't be getting married. Getting married costs money. That's true. That's definitely true. I mean, don't be a pussy. You can get out of this. Yeah, I could. You won't, I can. though, will you? I have to try it out, Tom, and see how things are going, but definitely oh. it's not going the way it's planned. If you're already this miserable, you think it's going to get better? Now answer carefully because you're talking to someone who's been divorced four times. Yeah, Do you think it gets better from here? No, not unless I change into someone that she wants me to be. So Look how bad it became just by moving in. Once she has your name signed to that contract, you're a prisoner. And she will run the ship. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. Well, duh. If your friends and family are telling you this, and I just met you seven minutes ago, I'm telling you this. Uh, is there a pattern here? Yeah, there is. Why do you have to try this out? Um, I don't know. I feel like... Uh a lot of family and societal, uh, you know. Do you uh, know? Norms. Do you know? Let's start with societal norms for a second. Are you aware that for the they've been taking the U.S. Census since 1790? You can look this up. That in the last census, which was the year 2000, for the first time in the history of the United States of America, more heads of household are single rather than married. Really. First time ever. So what's the societal norm, pal? <laughs> well, you just proved it. Also, a societal norms. In that same census, for the first time ever, the majority of women are single. That's a good thing for guys, right? If they're not married. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you are now going against the societal norms. Well, that's a good argument. I know. Yeah. So now what's your excuse? Of why I'm getting married? Yeah. Um, it feels like I'm uh, 31. It's uh, I don't feel like... Uh, going out on the prowl every night anymore like I used to. Uh-huh. Why couldn't you just have a girlfriend who lives in her own apartment somewhere? Well, I did that for many years. Yeah? And you were much happier back then, weren't you? Uh, You've already well, yeah. told me. I guess you already so. told me. Yeah. You were much happier back then. That's true. Is there something wrong with being happy? No. Mm. Hang on a second here, Scott. Let me get Bill on the phone here. Hey, Bill, what did you want to say to Scott? Oh, my God, this guy. I can't believe it, man. Why would you want to give up your freedom to some broad that is already controlling you, not letting you go out? Why would you want to do that? And not only just that, you're going to give up half your crap because you're probably not smart enough to get a prenup. How long did it take you to work for what you got, man? You're going to lose half of it. Is it worth well it? Well, I don't have uh, much right now, but like Tom said, you know, probably in the future, acquire some stuff, you know, and you're right. Hey, man, you know what? I've been there. I know what you're, I know what you're going through. You think it's great right now having her move in, but six months down the line, you're going to want to get this brought out of your house, and you're going to be stuck. She's going to be living there. She's going to be probably on the lease already. Am I correct? Well, the thing is, is that I'm moving into her house. It's like kind of a house she owns with her uh, sister who doesn't live there. So. Get out. Get out while you can, man. Pack your stuff. Go stay with a friend. Do whatever you got to do. Listen to Tom. He knows what he's talking about. I know. That's why I listen all the time. So it's like, that's why I wanted to call in. 
to, uh, I basically wanted to let people know, you know, it's a lot different than what you think it is when you move in, so. Dude, there are millions of people on the radio right now listening that are screaming at you not to do this. Get out of this relationship, have a girlfriend on the side, have two or three girlfriends on the side. You don't screw up your life, man. I know you said you're 30, 31, I'm 30 right now. You know, being married is all right, but come on, man. Yeah, you're right. All right, Father, right. can you take me out old school? I will. Here you go. Let me get Tony here. Uh, Tony, what did you want to say to Scott? Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, uh, Scott. Yeah. Hey, man, and, uh, check this out, man. Um, I got married uh, pretty young, man, and um, I had no prenup. And same as you, you know, I didn't have a good job or anything. I ended up having a house and a car. And when I got divorced, man, I lost it all. I had to pay, uh, you know, my attorney fees about $8,000. So, man, think about it before you get married, man. It's not worth it, man. Don't do it. Yeah, I hear you, bro. That's a bad story. And, yeah, it's way better being single. Do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it, man. Just don't get married, man. It's not worth it. Trust me. Yeah, thanks for the advice, bro. By the way, I let me ask... Some. Thank you, Tony. Let me ask you another question, Scott. When you move into her house, yeah. are you going to have to pay rent? Yeah, we do. No, no. You have to pay rent? Um, yeah, we both pay pay rent. Well, wait a minute. I thought she owns the house with her sister. Well, yeah. Um, Who are you renting it from? Technically, her, uh, her, her dad owns it, and then we pay... Um, to we pay him to keep it in a fund so he could remodel the house. Why should you be remodeling a house that you don't own? Because when we get married, then I'll, you know, kind of technically be a, a partial owner at least. No, you won't be because your name won't be on the deed. You will not be an owner in any way, shape, or form. I guess technically you're right. Not even technically. I'm right, period. You will not be an owner in any way. Not even in little ways. Not even a back doorway. <laughs> if you get divorced, you know how much of that house you're going to get? Zero. Zero. Well, it's better than renting, right? No, it's not. Because once you spend that money to improve a house that you don't own, and then later you get divorced, you know how much of that you're getting back? Nothing. Yeah, you're right. And you are renting. You're going to rent from her father. Basically. He's the landlord. So what do you mean it's better than renting? Well, either way, I'm throwing money away, right? But the point is, you're, you're not just throwing money away. You're throwing money to her family. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hold on a second. Dave, what did you want to say to Scott here? How can you how can you possibly think about getting married to a girl that you're having problems with a month before you're getting married? You know what you're right. Years. I mean, like for a long time, I was uh, I was you know trying to flee the situation. I'm like, this isn't right, and and uh, I wasn't sure, and I was you know going to get out of it. And then uh, the the moving date came down to it, and I had to get out. And so all of a sudden, a, here I am. I'm living a long with her. time. You've only known her a year. That's not a long time. That's true. That's true. Think about it. You think it's bad now? Wait till you're married in two years. Yeah, I know. And you think it's expensive now? Wait till you get divorced. Yeah, you're right. It's like, what, 60% now? It doesn't matter what it costs. Right now, it's free. You kick her to the curb. Either you move, leave, do whatever you got to do, you get away from the problem. Yeah. Hmm. He it's won't. Quite a situation. No, it's quite a situation that you put yourself in is what it is. Alex, what did you want to say here to Scott? Uh, tell him. Everybody, you know, I'm five years old. I'm sorry, younger than you, and I'm trying to give you advice here not to do it. You might have heard of, of a great writer in Hagen Hill. He says, the opposite of courage is not cowardness, it's conformity. You're being a coward by conforming to the societal, societal uh, you know, norms out there by wanting to get married and move in with this chick because probably half your friends, because they're pussies out there, 
have moved in with her, and he, you don't need to do that. Right, Tom? Of course. Right. Well, what do I do now? I'm, like, practically, I'm already in there. I moved all my stuff in. Move your stuff out. Yeah. At least I won't have to kick her out. That's right. She can stay there with her sister, and they can pay her father rent. Uh, she's losing nothing because she didn't move anywhere, so you don't have to feel guilty about that. Right. And, and trust me, bro, what's your eye? You go to a bar, you hook up with a chick, you'll be a happy man, dude. You, you, you don't need this. You don't need this, dude. You, you already have no assets. You earlier said you probably will obtain some assets. What kind of attitude about life is that? you got to be got to be out there, dude. Like, make it happen. I will own assets. I will make it happen. No need for that BS. Yeah, you're right. Uh, How did you get to 31 and not have anything, Scott? <laughs> um, a lot of uh, renting apartments and, uh, I don't know, traveling a lot. Whatever happened to, like, getting an education or having a career? Well, I, I graduated from Cal State Fullerton and um, I'm in insurance uh, right now. So what did you major in insurance? No, I've majored in that. Uh, I was supposed to go into teaching, but that required another two uh, years of school, which I needed to start work right away. And you were lazy or broke or both? Um, just kind of enjoying life and I guess a little bit of lazy. I guess. Right. And yeah. you never went back. Right. So you just kind of let everything slip. A little bit. So now essentially you're desperate and you kind of wandered into this relationship. Is that right? Um, kind of. I found you know, what I thought was to be happiness and, um, you know, it's turning out to be a little different, a lot more than I thought. But if you're miserable, why in the world would you stay? Well, I guess it's because I'm not at the point of being miserable, but just uh, noticing a lot of changes and not, you know, I told her, you know, I said uh, things were a lot different back when I wasn't going to move in and why are they different now? And uh, she just said she's moody or whatever. And and uh, that's, uh, you know, it's a big change for her and for me and, and it is, you know, so... At this point, I'm not miserable, but you know, but I'm scared uh, to take that extra step because you don't know what's um, going to be around the corner. Why did you have to get married so fast? Um, it just, uh, I don't know, no reason. It just like we're going well. We're going to move in together to a house, and um, and it just seemed like the thing to do. I, that makes no sense for you. It seemed like the thing to do. Well, because, I don't know. She was bringing it up, and I'm 31. So my, she my she and, nagged you into it? A little bit, and then my my family is all kind of like waiting for him, the last one to get married. and um, Yeah, so but that's because you've been sitting around doing nothing with your life. <laughs> uh, you've got no career. You essentially threw your... Uh, Throw your uh, teaching credential away, or you didn't even get a teaching credential. You threw your education away. Yeah, in a way. Not in a way. Unless no. you studied insurance in school, uh, you studied for one thing, and now you're doing another. You're right. How much you're of right. that uh, education degree do you use at the insurance company? Well, it does involve a lot of writing and uh, you know verbal um, communication. But um, it's more for a life experience that, you know, for right. just to be educated person, you know. Right. So, How much does that insurance job pay? Uh, around 50, 50. Okay. Around 50? Does that mean 40? <laughs> uh, no. 41? <laughs> it's, under, 40. it's under 50, right? Right. You're right. <laughs> Closer to 40. Uh, no, it's it's uh, under 50. Mary, what did you want to say to Scott here? Hello, Tom. Hello, Mary. Okay, I have never called in, but this is a serious student that needs to be expelled immediately. Not even from the school of Tom Likas, the school of life. Scott, really? you're an idiot. If you're Why? 31 years old and you're still talking about quote-unquote stocks and investing, you have no clue, brother. 
And this woman is going to drag you through the rest of your life until you die in a lonely grave. And you deserve it because you don't want anything more for yourself. Yeah, I guess you're starting to sound like her, too. Well, and she's going to be disappointed with you because she's going to think the minute you move in, and even more so the minute you get married, that you're going to have this newfound sense of responsibility and drive. And you know what, Scott? You don't have it in you. So do yourself a favor, do her a favor, and move out. You're too immature to be getting into this stuff. How am I immature? Listen. Have you you sh- you should try to get a recorded call of yourself. Yeah, thanks for the advice, but I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna live in her dad's house, and I'm kind of paying rent, but da, da, da. whatever, Stacoli. You have no clue, and you know what? You're gonna be 41 by the time you realize it, and you're gonna Which... be in the same position. It's pathetic. And please, just please, don't have children. Your mentality does not need to be spread into the gene pool at all. Do right. society a favor. Do not breed. Do I guarantee not. you. I guarantee you she's putting pinholes in the condoms right now. Oh, wait a minute. It's wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute, Scott. She told you she can't get pregnant, and you're not using a condom. Is that right? <laughs> Are you serious? No, I don't uh, want to go into that area. No, no, let's go into that area. Are you using <laughs> condoms, yes or no? No. No. And no. what is the birth control that she's using? Um, whatever the pill is. Whatever the pill is, if she's taking the pill, and you don't know even if she is, do you? No, I mean, I see her every day. So you shove it down her gullet every day, do you? No. That's Unless right, you use. don't. Any day she wants to hold on to you, she can go, oops, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're making me sick. Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. What college are you attending? Uh, I wasn't attending college. I right, attending college. I know. You were going to Bonham Young University. No, but... Right, uh, that was the college I, I you were would, going to, right? No, I was going to go to college, but then I switched my career. You switched to, to Bonham Young. Yes, you did a transfer. Is that in Utah, Bonham Young? Yeah. Right, BYU. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Like is here, 1 800 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. So you were boning this person, and uh, finally you decided, you know what, it'd be a good idea to move in together. And then when you moved in together, <laughs> you found out all the dirty little secrets, all their nasty habits. And there you are. Bill on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom Likas. Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I've been listening to you for about two years. And if I would have just got to know you two years before that, you would have saved me a lot of heartache, buddy. Yep, you should have tuned in. What, what, what can I do? The funniest thing is, it was my wife at the time was the one that turned me on to you a year after we got married. And uh, it's the only reason that... Uh, I'm uh, turning my life around now. You're turning your life around? How are you turning it around? Well, uh, about three days ago, I put a notice on our apartment and going through a divorce. Really? Three days ago, yes, there. And what was the specific reason? Why? Oh, she, uh, in the beginning, things were great, and... No matter what uh, you do or what everyone tries to say about them being able to stay the same, it doesn't happen. It changes. It gets worse and worse. Every month, they turn into a little bit more of a different person with higher expectations. They get dirtier habits. They're just It just became ridiculous. And then she decided that uh, it was my fault that she was the, the person that she was, that she became a dirty person. So she went and cheated on me. And I found out about it, and I said, goodbye. Here's the... Uh, 30-day notice, and you got 30 days to get out, and I'm out too. No kids, complete clean cut, less than three years of marriage. Wow. Wow. You didn't have any kids, did you? No, no. Got lucky with that one. Oh, Jesus. Did you come close? 
Uh, could, uh, it could have happened a couple of different times. You know, when you're when you're married, you don't really uh, think that there's a reason to have to be careful because before, even before I even listened to you, I had my own rules about condoms 100 percent of the time. So I never got myself in trouble with anybody else. But after you've been married and stuff, you figure, hey, it's your wife. You're allowed to, uh, you know, do things a little bit differently. And thank God nothing happened. You're killing me. But, uh, no, what I was going to say is that uh, all the other listener guys that are thinking about moving in, don't do it. They will change. In the beginning, they're the most sweetheart. Do your laundry. House is clean. You can go into their family's houses and you base that, that off of uh, the judgment off of them being clean. But they just get dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. Ugh. Start leaving their clothes around, stop doing dishes. Start uh, little dirty habits when they're on that time of the month. You start finding that stuff all over the place. When I think it personally, it should be one of the biggest hidden things you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. And how much is this divorce costing you, Bill? Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost, gonna cost me about $300 because there's no communal property, no children involved, and less than three years of marriage. Best money you ever spent. Yeah, $300 was, was well worth it. Now, are you going to be stupid again? Oh, no. Definitely I, not. I hope not. Our email address, it's my name. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.